He grew up in Holy Spirit, and thankful for that. With grateful heart, we want to enter into these sacred mysteries. We want to do it by asking our Lord to purify our hearts so they may be worthy places for Him. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter into John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let, on all, let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. 
through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God who refused me not, my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience, your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and he will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. I am Thomas Maddock. I was ordained a transitional deacon yesterday at the cathedral, and it is good to be home with my parish family. Holy Spirit, I'm blessed to be joined by many of my family members and friends gathered here in person, and I welcome those joining through live stream, family, friends, brother seminarians. Thank you all for your friendship, love, and prayers for me throughout my journey of formation in the seminary, and it is good to be with you all. Many of you were gearing up for this day a year ago, and as many of you know, I decided not to go through with my ordination just days before. And many of you were probably surprised 
confused, maybe disappointed. But I have to admit there was a lot of fear in my heart approaching I was afraid I wasn't going to be good enough, afraid I would fail, afraid of the unknown and of the future. But I felt like the Lord was calling me to trust. And in many ways, I couldn't. And I think this is the struggle of our faith, trusting in the goodness of God, that God will provide for us, that he is a loving father, and that whatever he's calling us to, whatever he's asking us to, he will be with us. I think of Philip in the first reading today. He was also a newly ordained deacon uh, in the early church, and he was sent to a town of Samaria, which is just north of Jerusalem, to preach the gospel to them. And the Samaritans and the Jews have hated each other for thousands of years. They were once a united kingdom, um, but they had been separated and they hated each other. And so Philip is sent to Samaria to preach Christ, to preach the good news. And I just try to imagine his thoughts on his way there. Like, he's, he has the Holy Spirit, but he's still a man. He's still weak. He's still human. But he trusted in God. He trusted that the Lord would be with him. I was thinking of all the acts of trust that Philip had to make on his journey. Um, Lord, will you be with me? Yes, I will be with you. Just that constant relationship that he would have had to have with the Lord on his way there. But he trusted in the Lord. And when he proclaimed Christ to them, the entire town was converted. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would work through someone to convert an entire town. And it says in the gospel, there was great joy in that city. And I imagine Philip just being overwhelmed with how much the Lord loved him, how much the Lord was good to him, and made that amazing act of faith um, converting that town through him. Trusting in the goodness of God. And I think this struggle not only applies to big things in life, like a vocation, but also to little things, little things in our daily life, little things that God's asking us to do, um, to talk to a friend, uh, to, to reach out to someone who's lonely, whatever it may be. Maybe someone's discouraged and the Lord's like, go talk to them. Trust that the Lord will be with you and he will show up. I think oftentimes we can see living a faith life, a life in relationship with God, as a threat to our freedom because we kind of like our own life. We like our comforts, we like our plans, um, we like how our life is. But if we're being honest with ourselves, deep down we desire that relationship. We desire living a life of friendship with God, someone who has a better plan for us than we can imagine for ourselves. And so look into yourselves and see, where is the Lord? Where is he calling me to do? How, how is he asking me to have a relationship with him? So I ask you, and I urge you today, in these crazy circumstances uh, of COVID-19 and the way the church is and all the things that we have to do to comply with this and um, to let God in, surrender to God, trust that he will be with you. Jesus promised us in the gospel, I will give you the Holy Spirit to be with you always, the advocate. And that this is the joy of the gospel, that the Father and the Son would give us the love that they share between them, which is the Holy Spirit. And we have that same spirit through our baptism and through our confirmation. So trust that. Yesterday morning at my ordination, I laid down on the cathedral floor 
and laid down my life, my plans, and gave them all to the Lord. Because I trust that with God, I have everything. And I want you to share in that joy of being in friendship with God, being in love with God, and trusting in his goodness. Now stand and together profess our faith, a believing one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, a believing one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has promised not to leave us orphans, counting on the boundless mercy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We now pray. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That divisions in the world will be healed, violence will cease, and the peace of God's kingdom will bless the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, essential workers, public officials, and all who are serving the common good during this pandemic. May they be filled with courage, strength, and wisdom, and be blessed with good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will strengthen and preserve our parish in his holy service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering from addictions may come to have liberation and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in the current outbreak of sickness, that they may be healed, and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness in recent months. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Annabella Silva, mother of Liz Anderson, Stephen Lentz, brother of George Lentz, and for Dutton and Catherine Bruner, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they find peace and eternal joy in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the grace this week to keep Christ as Lord in our hearts, ready to suffer for the sake of righteousness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Pray also for Deacon Thomas, that along with Deacon Luke Doyle and Luke 
and Deacon Keith Chadwick. We receive and continue to minister in the abundance of the Holy Spirit and his word may be anointed and may reach many hearts and he may be transformed as he does so. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we know that you hear our prayers and attend to our needs. Increase in us the virtues of faith, hope, and love through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, so that the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. We have a few instructions for communion. The first one is actually regarding dismissal. Because after, at the end of Mass, you will be dismissed by ushers, and I'll give you directions. So stay till the end and, be, um, and follow the directions so that we can leave the church orderly. For what it, uh, concerns communion, we will have three communion lines, one in the one on each side, one on that side, and one on the other side. So A and B share the, main, the same aisle, C and D share the center aisle, and E and F will share this other aisle. We're going to do communion section by section, all the three at the same time. So section A will start from the front to the bottom, then section B after they're done, same thing C starts in the middle, and then D. Same thing, E starts, and then F. You will see there's a box. They're six feet apart, and that's where, with your, still your mask on, you will say, when your, the body of Christ is presented to you, you will say, Amen. Then you remove your mask, come as close as needed to receive the Eucharist in your hands. Then you step aside, based on where your section is. There are X's on the floor. Consume the Eucharist, put on the mask, and then go back to your pew. So, amen box. Say amen with your mask on. Mask, receive the Eucharist. Consume on the side and put it back on. It's helpful if your hands are cupped or they're flat, but the most important thing is that you're still. You hold your hands still so that the priest, the deacon, or the Eucharistic minister can just gently pose, I mean, uh, put place, thank you, the Eucharist in your hands without touching your hands. Because the whole thing is like minimizing contact of touching and talking to each other. That's why Eucharistic minister will have masks on as we distribute communion too. Um, 
if you absolutely feel uncomfortable to receive in your hand and want to receive on your tongue, you need to do that at the end of Mass. And after you receive the Eucharist, you will ask to go directly to your car in the parking. So again, we're going to have three lines. The usher will help and hopefully it makes sense.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. So, so sorry that it was a shorter Mass that we need to keep it in time because it was very inspiring to hear you sharing your heart there and trust and surrender, I think, are something we need to hear again. So thank you, Thomas. Thank you for a great job. And count on our... And in our prayers will accompany, continue to accompany you throughout this diaconate year. Okay. So dismissal now, we're going to use the main entrance and the choir entrance, and you're going to be dismissed by section again, as we did for communion. So A and B, you are the last one, so if you want to pray a little longer, feel free to do it. So section A, starting from the first row, you can go out to the exit, and please go to the parking lot. Go to your car and leave and be mindful of the six feet distance if people don't live in your same house. Section C from the back row, you can start coming from the main aisle, you can start going out through the main door. So let the people who are in the last uh, pews go first, so then we avoid to do that. So section F, from the first row, please, for section E, sorry, yes. You can go that direction, thank you. So the front row of section D here, you guys can go out the choir since it's empty. Start from the front row, start going this direction, please. You can meet out in the parking lot or wherever you're going. So uh, John coming out on that side, you can start going out of the, of the choir exit. Thank you. So section B, starting from the last rows, if you guys want to use the main entrance. And then section A, if you want to come all the way across and use also the choir exit or by now also the final exit is good, the main exit. Denise, did you stop recording? You can stop recording.